What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back again with a new video. And today, this is a simple question I have to answer to you today. Is New York truly competitive? I know, this may sound crazy. New York statewide may have a competitive governor's race. I know that may sound crazy, but we've been getting some polling data from several pollsters that show this race is a lot closer than I even originally expected it to be. I thought, okay, maybe Lee Zeldin gets this race within like 13 or 14, but some polls show this race potentially within 10 points, if not potentially within a margin of error. Now, before I forget, of course, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow the Mysterious Twitter account in the description down below, and also join the channel. That is right, folks, for just 10 cents a day, you can join Real American Politics, only 10 cents a day. Phenomenal deal, recommend you join today. So, let's get into it, folks, because this is a fascinating topic to discuss, and again, I don't think the state's going to flip just yet, but, all right, but, 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 things have been trending the way of the Lee Zeldin campaign, and it started a couple months ago after the primary. Zeldin was slowly picking away at the Hooch's margin. Now, we're potentially within the margin of error from some polls, including Trafalgar, you look at this poll from a couple months ago, I think this was, let's see here, yep, this September, like a month ago, Zelda was down by around four points, four and a half points. As of, let's see, October 3rd, he was down by only under two points. And this included Larry Sharp, who I firmly think, I firmly believe that he's already off the ballot. And I firmly believe those voters are going to go to Zeldin. Again, I'm pretty sure because it says right here he was disqualified. So is he? We just got to see. But if he is truly disqualified, which I believe he is, based on what I know, these voters more than likely are going to go overwhelmingly for Zeldin. If they weren't going to vote for the Hooch originally, they weren't going to vote, all right? If they were going to vote Libertarian before the incumbent, they're going to vote for the opponent. That's usually how it works in politics. Even a state like New York, if an incumbent is not winning these third-party voters or originally, she's not going to win them no matter what. And Zeldin, I think, has a chance of getting this race significantly closer. RCP only has it a 12-point lead for the Hooch and a 14-point lead for the Hooch from 5 turn 8. 538, 5 turn 8, whatever. Point is... That is a good sign for the Zeldin campaign. And you look at his campaign as a whole. It is potentially the best campaign I have seen this entire cycle. Just hammering the hooch over crime, crime, crime. He's not backing down. He's just been hammering her over crime, crime, crime. That's the only thing he's been focused on. And not just, you know, pathetic RNC crime ads, which... The RNC, actually, they've been decent with crime this cycle. Not the generic, oh, we're going to stop crime. No, like, vote like your life may depend on it. You know, showing people getting shot at and stuff. That is perfect messaging in the state of New York. And that is why this is Zeldin's pathway and why I think his campaign strategy bodes perfectly for his pathway to victory. So, obviously, he is from Long Island. Suffolk County, that's exactly where his district is. And the biggest thing for Zeldin originally was, okay, his only shot to really have a shot was he has to do great in upstate New York. This is phase one. Just win a lot of these rural counties. You cannot lose even a county like Erie. You have to flip a county like Erie to have a significant shot. Will he... I don't know, but the rest of the state, I've heard some polling data, he's getting pretty solid margins in the rest of these states, significantly better than Trump in some, some data I've heard. Now, again, is this 100%? 
It is poorly, but we just got to see. But the biggest thing is you cannot have light red counties up here. These should be dark red. Like, a lot of these counties, there's no reason that, again, I know these are northeastern rurals. They're not the same as rural Ohio. But still, you should not be getting less than 55%. What is this? But either way, folks, this was phase one. Max out rural turnout. And I think you already did that. You look at the primary turnout. Was very good for upstate New York. The second phase, secure the Long Island area. Suffolk and N Nassau County. Nassau County. These were the two main counties, <clears throat> of course, of Long Island. He has to win both of them by... I would say double digits in Suffolk and probably by a couple points in NASA. Well, it appears he's on pace to win both these by a substantial margin. And again, you look at the vote share, the size of leads. These are small vote shares compared to, well, you know, a certain four county city. But there's still a lot of votes in Suffolk, a lot of votes in NASA County. I mean, if you flip that county, that's 70,000 votes. Sure, in the grand scheme of things, not a lot, but you just start picking off some of these voters, plus with lower turnout. New York City's not going to be that big of an electorate, or compared to, like, 2020. It's going to be a bit smaller. And if you pick off places like Erie, Rochester, Syracuse, etc., you're going you're gonna to really sit mar lower this margin by quite a bit. But the main counties of this election, I personally believe, is Westchester, and Duchess. These are the two, I would say, bellwether counties of the state, all right, for this election. If Duchess goes Republican for Zeldman, which I think it will, that's a sign that the rest of upstate New York is going to go heavy Republican. This is a fairly Democrat county, and we saw it flip. It's one of those counties that have a good bit of everything, and if Ulster flips, that's also very similar. That's also a good sign. But what really matters, in my opinion is Westchester County. This is the critical county of them all. This is essentially a burb of New York City. Look, if you want any shot of winning the state of New York, you cannot lose Westchester by, what is that, 150,000 votes? You can't lose by 36%. I mean, that's more than the entire state. This is a county that's a very suburban county that I think the law and order message is going to work phenomenally in this county specifically. It's a bur somewhat of a burb of New York City. And while it's not that many votes compared to, well, like Bro Brooklyn, the Queens, Manhattan, or the Bronx, it's still a substantial amount of votes. But if he does go to Westchester, like gets this within, I would say 15%. We got a ball game here, folks. If this is within 15%, I think the election comes down to New York City. If he can somehow crack, you know, 18% of the Bronx. Again, the Bronx is one of those counties that's going to be fairly hard to crack. Do a bit better in Queens, you know. These two here, Brooklyn and Queens, if you crack 30% in both of them, Manhattan do a little bit better, do a little bit better in the Bronx, etc., this race could potentially flip. Now, again, in my opinion, he has two of the four steps locked down. Upstate New York and Long Island. But he has to somehow do great in a Westchester. Like, he doesn't have to win it. But kind of like what Youngkin did to Loudoun County in Northern Virginia. Just knock down that vote share where when the rest of the votes come in, you have a ball game here. Because if Westchester's going 60-40 for the hooch, it's over. But if it's going like 55-45, you got a serious shot here. And again, the New York City turnout is going to be massive. Again, you need some gains in Queens, Brooklyn, etc. But if turnout is significantly lower than it was in 2020 compared to the rest of the state, Zeldin has a shot. And again, this is a lot of hypotheticals. He needs the big four. Upstate New York to be blood red. It appears it's to be that way. Him to do great in Long Island. It appears he has that set in stone. The last two, Westchester and New York City turnout. That's kind of the big four. If all four things happen, Zeldin may become the next governor of the great state of New York. Again, not my prediction, but he so far has two of the four locked down. 
Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed these type of videos. If you did, smash that like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and yes, of course, follow that mysterious Twitter account in the description down below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.